<laughs> oh, that's me. <laughs> oh, wow! We've just hooked the freight train. Hi right, guys, welcome back to Keeping It Real. I'm your host, Adrian Plan. Today, we're back out on the GBR, the Great Barrier Reef, one of my favorite spots in, in this beautiful country we call Australia. Um, conditions aren't favorable, supposed to drop out. We've got about a 10 to 15 nor nor easterly. So what we're targeting today is we're gonna see if we can get a couple of coral trout. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work a reef edge so it'll be a drop off into the, into the gutter or channel. Um, we're gonna fish shallow, we're gonna fish deep, and we see if we can pull one of these beautiful fish and highly sought after fish out of, this, um, out of this area. So without further ado, let's go fishing. Oh, this is a lot better. Got to go hard on the first couple of pulls. Oh, and we've got ourselves a whole trout. Okay, we just lost another trout. We didn't lose him. He sort of spat the hook right at the boat. Anyway, we're letting the fish go anyway. This is a, uh, we're catch and release. We only take what we need. Um, you will see us take fish from time to time for our uh, fish and dish, our cooking episodes. So yeah, it's good to see him swim away, get bigger, someone else catch them. I just love being out here and doing this. It's great. Oh, oh. This is a better fish. Oh, this is a nice fish. Trying to get him out of the bricks. Get that couple of wines. Once you get them off the bottom, you're normally right, unless you've got the, the teeth around. What have we got here? Oh yeah. Oh. And it's a shark. <laughs> Here he comes, little reef shark. So guys, for the, for the trout today, I'm using, I like to use whole pillies, you know, a 7.0 mustad, always use the mustad. Pretty simple rig, run and sinker. So through the eye, feed it all the way, all the way through, and then about that uh, 15, 20 centimeters from the tail, and just pull it tight, and it just nicely sinks that hook in there. And that's our bait. You can see the barb sticking out on the other side. So beautifully presented bait, that will just drift down nicely to the bottom. Hopefully a trout will see it and absolutely smash it. We'll find out. Oh, oh there he goes. <laughs> Still dropping to the bottom and bang. <laughs> Not a big fish. Oh, beautiful red coral trout. Have a go at the colours in this guy. Beautiful red. There you go, another beautiful 
with Sunday GBR cold trout. Just a little guy, you know, 38 centimetres 38 centimetres is legal with these guys and you'll see the red in him, normally you're trout because you will um, hopefully later on when we fish a bit shallower we'll uh, be able to catch a green trout so they're actually the red in the deep and green in the shallow but beautiful little fish big predator mouth on them, big fangs hopefully we'll get one a little bit bigger and we'll uh, be able to get a good look down his throat let this guy go oh, the beautiful colours in him Oh, there he goes. Back to the bottom. Oh, oh nice. I've got him up off the bottom now. I don't know what he is. He feels like a nice trout. He got a good head shape. No, I'm wrong. Nice lipper. Go, another big, fat, juicy lipper. Feels like a trout, but it could be a trevally. Oh no, it's a trevally. Okay, just caught ourselves a little uh, trevally, little bludger trevally, just feeding off the, the back edge of this reef here on the, on the flooding tide. He'd be sitting working these reef edges, getting all the, the bits and pieces and little fish that are getting washed off and anything that was left over there from the low tide and it, it's flowing off into this deeper water and it's, it's just the runoff off the reef. Let's let him go. here now. Oh, except for that one. <laughs> On the drop. Oh, he's got small. Ah. ah, he's actually taken, I can see red in his mouth, so he's actually taken me fish. So there you go, caught a, a little cod, or had a little cod. G'day guys, welcome to the Keeping It Real Night Edition. Gonna chase some of my favourite fish, the Red Throat Emperor, or Sweet Lip commonly known as. We're in about 30 metres of water, got a bit of a bommy behind us that comes up up to about the 15 metres, so we've had a 15 metre rise. Um, one of my favourite baits for chasing the, the sweet lip is whole squid. So pretty simple, hook in the back, and it's just a matter of weaving the, the hook in and out of the squid until you get a beautiful looking bait like that. You know, we've got the teasers, the tentacles still on, which they love. But hopefully we might be able to get one or two of them. Um, you never know your luck. So we'll give it a go. Let's go fishing. Been here about five minutes, guys. I'm, I'm just starting to get the, the bites. I'm hoping it's gonna be a red throat. Oh, there we go. He's got the shape like a red throat. 
They're beautiful fish. They fight hard for the size of them. And hey, presto, we get ourselves a nice red throat. Beautiful fish, just a, not, a, not a big fish, about the kilo mark. Beautiful eating, absolutely love these fish. You can see the big eyes on these guys. They're a night fish. Um, I don't want to keep him out of the water too long, so I'm going to slip him back. We'll see if we can get ourselves another one. What the, the type of bottom uh, that I find for the, for the red throat is they like that bit of rubbly, sandy sort of bottom with a bit of coral or a bit of structure there. It doesn't have to be a lot, but they do like that broken bottom that I call it. A bit of sand, blotchy sort of bottom, and you'll, you'll find these guys living in that area. Okay, guys, let's give it another crack. You know, five minutes here um, on one of my favorite spots. Got a nice red throat back in the water. See if we can jag another one. Just starting to get a bit of interest now. And there we go. Oh, these are great fun. And another beautiful red throat. Another beautiful quality fish. <laughs> oh, I dropped him. <laughs> He'll come back. I hope. Couple of little fellas down there. And there we go. Well, I dropped him too. <laughs> I think the smaller ones have come through. And the wee little babies have come in now. So just one of the little fellas, the machine gun bite I call it. <laughs> oh, I think the little fellas have just moved in. Oh, stripy bass. Another beautiful reef fish. These guys, is, that's about as big as, you know, they don't get much bigger than that. They, you know, 30 is a, a good one. You know, you might get them to 40, but that's about an average legal, legal size on them, about 25 centimeters, but beautiful eating reef fish as well, a stripy bass. And also you can see the, the big eyes on him. You know, a nighttime fish, anything with the big eyes is, is a nighttime sort of predator. to now you can see the reef edge here we got an ebbing tide so the the tides actually running and flowing back onto this reef that's probably about 30 meters behind us we're about 20 meters of water so normally for trout I like to get that flow on oh, missed him <laughs> I like to get that flow on so our baits just gonna sort of drift back a bit onto the edge of this reef and uh, your, your trout will tend to, to hang out in those sort of reef edges where the currents 
coming to them, so any food flowing in, it's actually coming to the fish. So we'll give it a couple of baits and, and see what happens. Oh, nice. Still dropping down, something's come up and hit it. Oh, no. Had a nice head shake. I'd say that was a trout. With the trout, you can feel them. Like similar to a barra, you hook them. They, they're shaking their mouth um, to try and shake that hook. Yeah, that was a nice fish. Anyway, we'll try again. Oh, this one's a bit better. Oh, this one's a lot better. Trying to get him up off the bottom. If he gets me into that coral with this braid, he'll just snap like cotton. So once we get him up a few, few metres, we're good. Oh, he's got a nice red throat. We've just uh, snagged a beautiful red throat emperor or sweet lip. You can see the, you know, the red down his throat there. Obviously, that's where they get their name from. Beautiful fish, beautiful eating fish, beautiful fighting fish. They go pretty hard. They get a, you know, a little bit bigger than that. That's probably an average size for these fish. But um, yeah, beautiful fish to eat, beautiful fish to catch. But anyway, we'll let this guy go. Away he goes. Oh, he's got me in. No, too slow. That's what happens when you're a bit slow off the mark. They um, <laughs> they grab, come out of the coral, bang. He's obviously, he's grabbed it on the way down. I was a bit slow and uh, takes me straight into the bricks. That would have been a trout that's what they do. So with that last drop, I hold Pilly on, letting it slowly float down. And um, normally what happens with the trout, they'll see it, they'll come out of their, their hole or coral, wherever they're living, grab that Pilly and race straight back into their hole. I was a bit slow off the mark this morning, missed him. He's taken me into the, into the coral and the lead is just frayed. So I've got you know, half a metre a litre there and it's just all fried, so it pays to check, you know, every fish. Uh, check your leader. If it is frayed, yeah, cut it off, put a new bit in. Remember, and keep, your, keep your leader in the boat, don't throw it overboard. And, um, yeah, but something to keep an eye on is that leader. Starting to get a few bites. So what we've done now is we're actually drifting, drifting, <laughs> drifting along this reef edge. We've got the tide, the <laughs> little fellas having a go. We've got the tide and the wind working against each other, so it's a perfect slow drift, and we're just slowly coming along this reef edge. You can see it's smooth water behind us, so that's telling me that we've got, um, you know, that tide sort of is flowing over that reef, so we've got flow onto that reef, so it's all perfect to do this, this slow drift along this reef edge. That's gotta be a piece of the bottom. Just hooked a nice piece of coral. Find it a bit rocky myself. And there he goes. And we got on the drop. Don't know what this fella is. He sort of feels like a bit of dead weight. Fish. 
Venus tusk fish. Oop. Anyone can hook a fish in the mouth, but to hook them in the side near the fin is a special skill. I actually managed to get him in the side, so awesome. So we've just come along this, the edge of the reef here, and we've seen a heap of fish working on the surface or just below the surface. Weren't sure on what they were. We got our go fish cam out, we've thrown it into the school, and what we found was a, a big school of barracuda. Couldn't get them to hit a, a metal shiny slug, but yeah, really good to see. Well worth the look. So we, we threw different lures at them to try and get these fish to bite, but yeah, we had no chance. They, they've got too much bait rounded up up against the reef. They're more interested in the liveies than our artificial lures. Wow! We've just hooked a freight train! Oh, oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh no! That was a nice fish. That was a nice fish. I had no chance of stopping him. 50 pound braid, 80 pound leader, and he was going. Wow, that was a nice fish. Straight into the bricks, into the coral. Oh. Hooked ourselves a nice little red trout. Visit this nice little trout. We're going to keep this guy for our cooking segment. So you've seen us catch and release on, the, on this series. So we do throw 99% of the fish back. We do keep a couple of fish for our fish and dish so we can show you some awesome, simple cooking recipes with beautiful fish like this. Hey guys, welcome to Fish and Dish. I'm gonna be your chef for today and we're gonna cook ourselves up some coral trout. So we got some nice fresh coral trout here that we caught um, a little while ago when we did a reef trip, uh, about a plate sized trout. So we're gonna start off with cooking this. So what I'm gonna do first, bit of lemon thyme. So just, a, oh, you can hear that crackle. Just to put that on the plate, bring the flavors out of that, that fish. I've got a really hot plate. We'll get that on. There we go, I'll just put a bit more oil on that. Just the drizzle, don't want to overdo it with oil. Gonna actually place a piece of the lemon thyme, beautiful, on each fillet. Oh. As usual, a little bit of cracked pepper on each piece. A little bit of salt, oh, or a lot of salt. It's uh, getting a bit dry, so I'll just a little bit more oil. While that's cooking, what a day, what a crack of a day. We thought we'd do this uh, bit of a coral trout pond side and having a look, had a look before, the barra are happy, the jack are happy. What we're actually gonna do with this, this coral trout I've made up a mango sweet chili sauce, so a little bit different. So it's, you'll, you'll require about a cup of mango, diced mango, put in the blender. Uh, I've used uh, two te teaspoons of sweet chili, and this is for taste, remember guys? So if you like a bit more bang or a bit more punch, chop up a few bird's eyes, but it's to taste. So for, for this, I don't like a lot of bang, but just that right amount of warmth. So that's up to you for that. You want that pan fairly hot so you get that sizzle and put a nice sear on both sides of the of the fish. It's a legal sized trout, so you know you're probably looking that two to three minutes aside and they'll be done. You don't want to overcook your fish. And the idea of our uh, fish and dish guys is, is to keep the cooking simple. Stuff that, you know, keep the ingredients that everyone has in their cupboard at home that, you know, anyone can cook it. And I find, and me personally, um, keeping the, the natural flavours of your food or your seafood that you catch is, is the best way to have it. So it's, it's about keeping it simple. 
Okay, we'll give these a bit of a flip. Oh. Oh, so we've seared it, well they're beautiful brown, these won't take long, another drizzle of oil, just only a tiny little bit of oil. So we don't want to overcook this trout, so get yourself a fork, and the best way is find your thickest part of your fillet, push it in, and you can see how that fillet's clinging on a bit to the fork. So it's still, still a bit green there, so you should be able to push that fork into the thickest part of the fillet, and lift that fork out without lifting the fillet. And when we get to that stage, it's ready to plate. These are just plate size fillets. So, you know, two to three. I'm gonna do the fork test again. Yep, you can see that. I can poke in the thickest part of the fillet. The fork just slips straight out without lifting that fillet. So this fish is done. So we're gonna serve it on a plate of salad. You know, we've got the yellow capsicum, few cherry tomatoes, bit of lettuce, and of course we'll uh, top it with that lemon thyme. So just a plate. We're going to top it off with my mango sweet chilli sauce that I've made earlier. Give it a bit of a mix and just a bit of a drizzle. Don't want to go overboard, but just that nice drizzle. You can even put it on your salad and top it off with our lemon thyme. And, and there you have it, our coral trout fresh salad with a sweet chili mango sauce. So to get the recipe for this coral trout dish, guys, jump on our website. The recipe will be up there. You can add to it, experiment with it, but try this dish, beautiful. Now this is the best part, after smelling it cook, I'm actually gonna try this, and I think it's gonna be absolutely awesome. Get a bit of that mango sauce, sweet chili mango sauce. Oh, it's good. Sorry guys, it is really good. Try this, beautiful. Thanks for watching guys. Till next time, see you up the creek. Hi right, folks, today we're talking about EPIRBs and it's an essential part of safety gear and as usual we've got Mel from VMR to, to go over EPIRBs with us. Thanks Adrian. Uh, EPIRB, emergency position indicating rescue beacon. Essential, mandatory if you are going more than two miles from land or two miles outside partially smooth waters. Yep. They must be registered and you can register those with AMSA. Registration is free. Yep. Uh, you've got to renew that every two years, but registration is, is free. Just on that, Mel, with that registration, that, that EPIRB is then, it's registered to the owner and to the boat in it. So when these devices get activated, the, the search centre in Canberra um, knows exactly where it's gone off. They can pinpoint, they've got all your details on, from phone numbers, email addresses, so they can actually check to see if it is a, a real emergency. Absolutely right. Yep. They're not transportable from boat to boat. It is registered for that boat only. Yep. Uh, so please, just, it's, it's free registration. Yep. That's a no-brainer. Just make sure you do it. Just also be aware that there are penalties, or there could be penalties, for inappropriate use of an EPIRB. A life-threatening situation, that's when you use your EPIRB. Yep. What this will allow authorities and rescue organisations to do is to pinpoint your position. And depending on your EPIRB, on your EPIRB that can be down to 100 metres. Yep. And that could save your life. Yeah, well, everything's time critical in rescue situations. Um, you know, my background's rescue, and I know how important it is for for rescuers to to pinpoint. And you, you it could be time critical. Oh, it is. It could save your life, guys. Yep. So make sure you get a uh, good quality EPIRB. Make sure it is registered. Make sure you know how to use it. Make sure you can get access to it. Yep. Uh, they've just recently um, enacted uh, laws for commercial fishing vessels here that they must have a float-free EPIRB. And that comes after the loss of that fishing boat off uh, 1770 oh, yes, a couple of years yes, ago. Yes, yes, yep. So they've now activated, uh, initiated regulations, so they must have float-free EPIRBs, yep. which I think is a great idea. Yeah. Anything that's going to improve your safety on the sea is fantastic. Yep. Because as soon as you lose respect for the sea, 
It'll bite. It will bite and bite hard. Absolutely. <laughs> Mother Nature can throw the best at us or can throw the worst at us. It can. Now, um, if you're on a personal watercraft or operating inshore, you can use a personal locator beacon. A yep. couple of things with those. That's a very small unit that you strap to your arm. Um, so they've got to be registered. They must be GPS enabled yep. because the GPS enabled on the PLB will allow us to really home in on where you are when you set off the beacon. Yep. The other thing about EPIRBs is when it gets to the end of its life, and they've usually got about a 10-year battery life, don't just throw it away. It's got to be taken to somewhere where it can be disposed of properly and so that they can deactivate the battery. And there have been a number of instances where EPIRBs have gone off in landfills. And all that does is use rescue resources, helicopters, boats, everything trying to locate the source of an EPU. Yep. Dispose of it correctly. Here in the Whit Sundays, take it to Auto Pro in Cannonvale. They charge five dollars to dispose of your EPU and dispose of it properly. Yep, which is pretty cheap, like I said, it's a tie up resource is unnecessary. Absolutely. When at that time, you know, it could be a real emergency, someone needing assistance and well, it, they it find might, out it's gone off in a dump or a it bin. Might, it might avoid your fine as well. <laughs> well that's that's <laughs> the thing is the fine that comes with it. Handy bit of uh, gear guys. About 26 years ago, I was commercial fishing. The EPIRB sort of weren't out then. Uh, left one morning from the vessel. Big storm hit early that morning. Two days later, I was sort of actually found. So I drifted around for pretty well 48 hours in the middle of the ocean, out on the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, if I had one of these, um, would have sort of been found a lot easier. I was 17 at the time. Quite scary to be um, at that age drifting around. There's a lot of water out there and no land. So sure these yeah. things will save lives. So check them out. They're a must. Make sure they're registered to the boat. Worth every cent. Couldn't agree more. Spoken like a believer. <laughs> <laughs>